and make fur. So that was really fun to make. I hope you enjoyed the showcase. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you uh, some of the key features of a trading hall iron farm village breeder and also talk about some changes that Mojang have made recently which will affect the meta of how trading halls run and how those impact this trading hall and some changes that we might want to consider making um, in future. So let's go right into it. So let's talk firstly about the iron farm. The, the rate of the iron farm will depend upon how many villages you have in the trading hall. If you've got less than 10, you'll get no golems. If you've got 40 um, or more villagers, then you'll be getting pretty much max rates around 410 per hour. And 20 villagers or 30 villagers will give you intermediate rates. But this will be running all the time. You're at your trading hall. And so you're going to get some pretty good iron out of this anyway. Okay. The um, other thing I want to talk about was the, the trading hall is obviously one wide tileable. You can get seven villages in a row. Then you need to leave a gap, and that's because of water streams and how they work. We need to refresh a water stream after seven. And I've set this up in a square. So I've got uh, six lots of seven, 42 villages. There's no particular reason you have to do it that way. The same principles will apply. You can build this so that you've got you know villages opposite each other, multiple sets of villages. Um, well, however you want to do it. it the, the same principles will work just as well. Okay. One of the things that I wanted to do with the breeder was make sure that it was pretty much maintenance free. So we've got some signaling which tells us when we're low on carrots. So from this sign here and this, uh, this one here will tell you if you have no adult villagers left to uh, bring into the trading hall. So if you've been putting a lot of villages in at once, it takes a little while for new babies to, to be born and to grow up. And so you'll uh, be told when they are ready to go. Okay. And the signaling for that works with these daylight sensors. This clever little contraption here where a piston pushes a block above one of the daylight sensors and that triggers a signal down here. We've also got this one wide signaling system going up using bone meal. And the bone meal um, obviously is, is not renewable, but you know, how many villages do you need? Put a couple of stacks in here at the start and that, that'll be good forever. So that will bone meal this twisted vine and then the twisted vine will grow, as we saw in the showcase, and signal up to say to the breeder that you want a villager to be released down here. The breeder is designed to collect 10 adult villagers in here, and that's based on a number of beds that you place. So we'll collect up to 10 in here and it'll keep that stock constantly there, ready to go so that you don't have to wait too long to get new villagers into the uh, trading hall. But obviously it does take a while for babies to grow after they um, are replenishing villages you've already used. Um, the other thing with Breeder is it will uh, specifically give the villagers 12 carrots at a time. So you can't use bread with this specific design. It's got to be carrots or beetroot or uh, potatoes. Uh, and you can't mix them. So just keep to one. It'll give them 12 carrots at a time. That's the most efficient way of doing it. If you give them more than 12, then they'll start sharing and they'll both use up carrots when they breed. Whereas with 12 carrots, just one village will have them. That's enough for them to breed and you'll, you'll get a baby. It also will trigger when you have a, uh, if the carrots have run out and you add more carrots, then it'll know to automatically trigger and start uh, breeding more babies if uh, they are required. Okay, so let's talk about some of the changes that Mojang are making to the way that villager trading works. And the main thing that we've got to bear in mind is that now some villagers are going to be biome specific and to get certain trades, you'll need to get a villager from the appropriate biome. At the moment, um, that's in experimental, but it will apply to librarians, it'll apply to cartographers, and it'll apply to our friend, the armorer behind me here. So this is a problem because um, our breeder is only in one biome. And so to get all of the trades we might want in a trading hall, we're gonna to have to bring in villagers from elsewhere and the breeder can't do that for us. So that's a key thing. There are, of course, lots of other villager types and the breeder is still very useful for those. And um, so I think it's still a, a good thing to have. But one thing we may need to do is we may need to think about, for example, 
putting a system in here where this is where the, um, the, the villagers drop down from the breeder above. We may need to think of putting a system in near here which has a nether portal and that be an additional way of bringing uh, villagers into his trading hall from other biomes. So you take them through the nether because it's quicker that way. Uh, one thing we'd have to think about is when you call a villager at the moment, um, when you press the lever inside, that will also actually bring a villager down from the breeder. If we've also got one coming in from the nether, that's not going to work. So we'll need to find some way of shutting off this circuit. And you could do that just by uh, breaking some dust or taking out the bone meal, right? So if you're bringing villagers in from the nether, that's the way to do it. And then you can uh, use your lever inside and just drop them into that hole from the nether. So that'll work fine, I think. Uh, the second thing that I want to talk about is that um, you can now, and this is already in, in the full release, you can now only get discounts one once by zombifying and curing your villagers. So at the moment that's done by the uh, zombie coming along this track here and one of these trap doors will be open. When it's open, it can zombify that librarian here. But is it worth putting in this system to do that? If you can only do it once well yeah probably why not i mean this is quite a you know it's not an early game trading hall let's be honest it's quite an advanced trading hall and i think when you get to that stage it's probably the right thing to do and you have it set up already to go the alternative meta would be that you actually zombify your villagers before bringing them into the trading hall and by doing that um you only really have to do it in one place maybe you could even do it up in the breeder that will not work for this trading hall. And the reason for that is that um, if I, I've got this one open already, so you can see that a villager should go up there. And if I have a villager, uh, you'll see that villagers will float up and go into their cells. I'm going to get rid of that guy. But if I have a zombie villager, I brought in zombie villagers, even adult ones, don't float. So the whole system for getting them into their cells will not work with zombie villagers. It only works with villagers. So I think it's still the right thing to do. We can have um, these, uh, these zombies here. One thing I would probably change now if I was redesigning this is I'd have that single zombie go all the way around. It would take longer uh, rather than having a zombie per side. Uh, but even though it takes a little bit longer, you know, you're not queuing your villagers that often, so that's probably fine. Okay, I've got just two more things to mention. The first one is that the fact, uh, remember I said that villagers only need 12 carrots to breed, uh, and only one of them needs those carrots. That has been raised at a bug report, and I don't think Mojang are going to change it, but they might do. And if they do, then the setup of this village breeder uh, won't work as it does at the moment, and it makes things more complicated because we either have to give them 24 carrots, which needs a different circuit, or we just have to keep giving them food until you know it runs out. And then they might start dropping the food, it despawns, and we can't uh, keep it in the dispenser, and so we don't know whether there's food up in the breeder or not. It, it'll be a pain, right? It, I, I much prefer the way it is. So hopefully it'll stay that way, but there is a risk that it could change in the future. If it does, then we'll fix it. And the last thing I want to call out is that there's been a change in Java edition. I don't play much Java, but um, what it is, is it says that mobs would only be able to attack other mobs or possibly players when they're on the same level as them, when, when their hitboxes kind of overlap on the Y level. Now, you'll notice with this setup here that the um, zombie is up here on the rail and the villager is down there, so their hitboxes actually don't appear to overlap. So if that change ever comes to bedrock, there's no sign of it at the moment. If that change ever comes to bedrock, that could cause a problem with our zombification method, and we'd need to rethink that. Um, I, like I said, I, I don't see that change heading towards bedrock at the moment. There's nothing in the previews or anything, so we're probably safe for the time being. So there you have it, my best ever trading hall breeder and iron farm all in one and i think it's a really great thing there is a tutorial i've already done a tutorial for the trading hall that will be coming soon 
and then I need to follow that up with a uh, video for the uh, the breeder and for the iron farm parts and they're, they're not particularly big builds so it should be fairly okay but um, there's a few complications that we need to just make sure we get right as well so uh, it's important to get a video for that. I'll also give a world download attached to this video so if you want to go and get the world download early and have a look then absolutely go ahead and do that and I hope to see you very soon. You take care, bye bye.